Greetings, friends and friends of friends. Um, tonight I want to talk about, and I guess show you how to install, this pretty nifty little thing. Uh, so I found this, well I didn't really find it, but I picked this up on Taobao here. Uh, it was about 500 Chinese Yuan, which works out to about $70 USD, and then it cost me another 170 something U uh, Chinese Yuan which to, to ship it excuse me um, I paid a little bit extra for expedited shipping and to upgrade to a better carrier and to upgrade the packaging because I was a little bit worried that this screen would be just shipped in the anti-static bag that it came in and nothing else uh, well I guess and like a bowl mailer or something completely inadequate um, and it ended up coming in a box with plenty and plenty of bubble wrap inside of a bag inside of um you know closed cell foam it it worked out this thing arrived intact uh in fact i've already tested it out and installed it in my game boy advance it does work it's pretty cool uh but i'm gonna basically start this video over again because this is in fact the third time I am recording this. The first two times I figured, hey, I'll record it with my fancy Sony Xperia XZ1 compact phone here. You know, these things are not that cheap. Um, Snapdragon 835 or 45 or whatever the hell it is. Uh, anyway, it, it's, it's a flagship phone. You figure, oh, hey, this can record video, no issues. Well, don't buy Sony if you want a reliable phone. It has crashed twice randomly during filming, and I have lost all of the footage. So, we're going to go back to all reliable here. My Microsoft Lumia 640. Yes, I recognize the irony in that, especially because it is currently downloading some updates. Uh, but anyway, back to the subject at hand. So, this screen, let me bring over my tablet here. So this actually, this whole journey started uh, about two months ago when a user by the name of Sun0140517 posted this on the Game Boy subreddit here. And this is just his Game Boy Advance and it says custom IPS screen and adjustable backlight. And you know what? I thought that was the coolest freaking thing. All right. Uh, anyway, if you scroll down through the comments, uh, eventually you'll see that he's posting this uh, imager album here, and in here, he walks through walks you through the process of buying it from Taobao. He includes a link there, which you know, in hindsight, I'm assuming this was kind of a shill post, and he includes some very very nice, very readable instructions here. So on this screen itself, there is. Oh, let me just drop it on my desk here. Hopefully it survived. Um, so there are these two wires that come attached. These just get soldered to the battery terminals and then there's three solder points, one right here and then two right here uh, that you can solder up to the buttons start or select and L and R uh, for brightness control. Uh, but it does not come with any wires. It does not come with any instructions and you have to do quite a bit of uh, plastic surgery for your Game Boy Advance here. You gotta cut on, uh, well I guess on just the one side here, and you gotta kinda cut into where the speaker goes and it's a little bit nasty. Um, put it in, you got your wires installed. Uh, okay, so this game, this screen only works on the 40-pin Game Boy Advance version. It does not work on the 32-pin variant. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, ben Ven is working on an NDSL screen mod for the Game Boy Advance Nintendo DS Lite, and he's actually designing it to work with the Game Boy Advance SP first. That way he can easily port it to a Game Boy Advance 32-pin model and the 40 pin model. Um, I guess the reasoning behind that was he had Game Boy Advance SPs handy but didn't exactly have Game Boy Advances handy. But nonetheless, he's working on it. He's a wizard. If he can get it, 
if he can get his mod, which by the way also uses an FPGA to work with a 32 pin Game Boy, I don't see why this one couldn't be used to work. So the power leads are for the screen, that's these red and yellow, white wires, mine are blue and white, um, are just soldered straight to the battery contacts. TP2 is select or start, I honestly cannot remember. Um, and then it's just soldered to the to uh, the, the shoulder button contacts there. And I'm just going to copy their wiring exactly. I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel here. And so that's that. I'm going to have this off to the side here to try and uh, use as a cheat sheet, really. If you look at the Taobao listing, um, I don't know about you, but I can't read any of that. You can plug this into Google Translate. But nonetheless, it just talks about the hardware itself and not the actual install. And there are pictures, comparisons, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll throw a link to all this stuff uh, when I post this video here. But yeah, there's nothing about the install in here. So I'm going to put this off to the side. Scroll it back up here. There we go. Just so I have a reference. And I don't mess this up. So I've already done this a few times, but I'm going to do it again just for the sake of showing you what's going on here. I'm going to plug the original 40 pin screen in. This is the non backlit. You know, this is what it shipped with in 2001 or whatever. And I've got my multimeter here plugged in to one of the leads is this alligator clip, which runs to. A double A battery holder and in here I have some rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries they say 1700 milliamp hours I've tested these things they're more like 800 don't fall for the wank um, anyway I'm gonna plug my ground lead into the ground and then plug or I guess clip the positive to the positive there and I'll just, I'll put that there, whatever. You can see all the important stuff. Tilt the screen up, turn it on, turn it on. Uh-oh, I have broken something. Don't tell me I just plugged that in backwards. Oh, I know. You got to switch the meter over to the right setting. So right now it's in the 10 amp setting, but the the probe isn't in the 10 amp hole. So if I switch this over to 200, it's going to come on. Ta-da! Flip that up so you can see it. It's just sitting at the boot screen. There's no game or anything loaded. And it is pulling. Every time I do this, it goes down. Maybe I should keep doing this. Um, it is now pulling 86 0.7.8 milliamps when I first did this it was pulling 97 then it went down to 93 now it's pulling 86 no idea what's going on but here's the point I want to make doesn't matter how much this is pulling we want to see how much more it pulls when we attach the new screen here so I'm gonna turn this off unplug this and uh, if my meter being on the wrong setting is any clue it's a lot more Anyway, we will pull this screen out, plug, oops, that's the wrong screen, plug this new screen in. Sorry for that noise in the background. My cat is currently hunting a bottle cap. And flip this up here. And I've already forgotten which wire is which, so this is what my handy reference off to the side is. All right, so it looks like the white wire is the ground. Come on. I think my iron went to sleep on me. I've had it on so long. Get that in there. Okay. Get that in there. Now, when I saw that you have to wire or at least that the guide I'm following wired it straight to the battery. I was kind of concerned 
that this would lead to some like transient voltage drain, but that's not quite the case. Um, okay, so get it plugged in. That should be fine, hanging like that. It's gonna sit at a little bit of an angle. But you can see it's plugged in, it's off, uh, but per the meter, it's not drawing anything. If I try and turn it on, it's going to zero out the meter here. But it works. It's pretty nice. Uh, this zeroing out the meter means that I've gone over my 200 milliamp limit in this setting. So I've got to switch this off, put this into the other position, switch that to the 10 amp setting, and that's actually fused. I've opened these cheap meters up, but I'm not sure I would actually trust it. Anyway turn it on we see now it's pulling 0.24 which means it's pulling somewhere 240 milliamps Ooh, one thing I'm noticing on this screen or on this camera on this phone that I didn't notice on my other one is this kind of shutter effect that's interesting I would have thought this was a portrait screen sideways but maybe they were able to change the refresh or there's something some other trickery going on I don't know anyway I digress Let me turn my light off here so we can compare with the auto adjust brightness um, I'm gonna turn this other Game Boy on this is just a regular AGS 101 mod Oop. Let's pull the game out and if we get that level the uh, lead fell off. So I was pressing down on it. Okay, I'll just hold that up. You can see, if you compare the two, it looks like the one on my left here, which is the uh, Taobao screen, is a wee bit bigger. Or, ex bigger, excuse me, brighter, uh, which I guess kind of sort of explains the difference in power usage, but I think the big thing as far as power usage goes is that FPGA that it's using. Because the Game Boy Advance SP AGS101 screen, uh, that uses the exact same interface as the original Game Boy Advance screen, so you don't need any active conversion. You know, you just plug it in. And it works. Of course, you do need to do some stuff to get the backlight working fancy uh, properly. Uh, but the screen itself, the digital video requirement, you know, there's no adjustments that you have to make. Uh, I'm gonna unplug this and undo the wiring now. That's hot. Excuse me. Um, but I want to show you real quick. This screen. What it is, it's just an LCD itself. It's real thin, especially compared to an AGS-101 display or even the original display. It's slightly thinner than the original display and it has a backlight built in. Uh, but anyway, this screen, this LCD itself, is basically glued to this custom circuit board. And on this custom circuit board is an FPGA and several other components, but all of the uh, fancy product numbers and stuff have been etched out. I found it a little bit ironic, but they do that so that it's harder to reverse engineer. But, you know, this is a product of China. See a little bit of irony there? Anyway, okay. So next thing, and I'm actually probably going to do this off camera because I can see it taking quite a while, but I need to trim this shell to fit this screen and I'm going to do that by following my uh, guide here if we scroll down or excuse me I already scrolled down I need to scroll up you can see on the left side by the d-pad they didn't really cut away anything they probably cut away this um, this little lip that you have to do for AGS 101 mods I'll play with it I'll let you know uh, but on the left side here, you can see, well, that's not a good picture. I think there was a better picture. Yeah. You can see they basically cut away the whole thing all the way to these, these button 
button walls here on this side here so that this whole side gets cut off. I will uh, I'll go try that out. I'll be back in, uh, well for you, it'll be a few seconds. Actually, you know what? I decided maybe I am going to film this. I might cut this out, might throw it in. I'll probably throw it in. My videos are horrendously long already anyway. I just want to show what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. So for this thing in particular, I'm going to take out the LED light pipe before I lose it. I'll push it to the side so I can forget to install it later and bitch about it. How I'm going to remove this whole wall here, I'm going to take my flush cutters and I actually bought a pair, a cheaper pair, um, because I keep using this pair for stuff like this and I don't want to break my nice pair. Uh, but in this case, I don't know if this one's going to work. I don't know if it's going to fit. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this in between. There's a little support for the screw. I'm going to stick it to the left of that on the top wall. And yeah, it's not working. We're going to use the other one. Same place. Squeeze. That's it. Now, this one, I believe, I don't know how far down we need to go. But according to the pictures, they cut into this part. So I'm going to start that, cut that in half, right there. And it looks like they cut off this whole bottom ridge too. So I'm going to cut there, right on the bottom part. So I haven't actually cut into this sidewall. I've just cut on the top and bottom here. And I'm going to keep cutting at every angle here all the way down just gonna cut that flush Heh, flush cutters get it anyway now that all the corners are cut oh there it is I'm gonna take my box cutter is nice and sharp I'm going to try not to cut a finger off here, but I'm going to score the corners. Ooh. The goal is not to cut all the way through the material, but to leave a very sizable crease. And adjust it for however is easiest for you. I'm obviously a lefty, so I have this backwards. All right, crease that. And I'm just gonna skip off, crease that, crease that. Crease that. Put it to the other side. Try not to cut into your palm. That was insanely dumb. Okay. I'm going to stop that before I uh, send myself to the emergency room. And I'm not going to crease that one because I can't think of a way to do it safely. Okay. Back to this side here. I'm going to cut at this screw post here about halfway. I think that's as far as I'll need to go. I didn't go all the way down. And then I have no idea what I'm going to do about this support here. That looks pretty beefy. And I'm going to start cutting into the speaker grill. I don't know how much of this we need to cut out. I'm just kind of winging it here. But I'm playing with this shit cutting apart my Game Boys so you guys don't have to wing it. Crease in the speaker area as well, though I don't think that's going to work the way I want it to. And now I need pliers, but I don't have any pliers handy. Oh, what the hell am I talking about? Yeah. I just got to get up out of my chair. Okay. Got my multi-tool. 
and you can take it and just kind of flex the uh, the wall here and it should snap right at that crease you made. And because we cut all the corners, just fold that over, pull it off. How easy is that? And these little bends you can just rip right off. I did crease them, so if you give it a little bend, it'll pop off. Looks like as far as the mold is concerned, this wall and the speaker, whatever this, whatever you'll call that, the speaker wall, are part of the same piece. So by removing this wall, you are already cutting into the speaker area. It's kind of hard to crease this. Ideally, we would like to crease it on the other side, but I can't really get the knife in there. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of wiggle it around. Hopefully that'll give me... Ooh, there it goes. Now I'm thinking... As far as installs go, you probably don't want to use a transparent shell because I don't imagine that this is going to be pretty. Oh. Here, oops. Accidentally scraped the screen lens. Hopefully, I didn't scratch it. Oh, still got to remove that part. Thinking though, let's get some of these tools out here. I'm gonna try use the flush cutter. Yeah, that's working fine. I'm not too concerned about the lens. I'm probably gonna replace it with a glass one eventually. Get in there to cut what I want to cut. Now I'm showing you how to do this without a Dremel, but quite frankly I'm probably going to come in after all this and clean it up with the Dremel. But Nonetheless, it's still easier to clear out all this material beforehand. Okay, that looks good. Let's test fit it and see what we got. Oh, I forgot a piece. This part too. Oh, oh. Perfect fit. That worked out nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I could install it as is. It is more than flush enough. I apologize if that noise is loud. My air conditioning fan is super noisy. Uh, but if I turn it off, it will get hot in here. So, anyway, I'm gonna do one more thing. I could install it like this, but what I'm gonna do I'm going to go in and clean up these little ridges like I would for an AGS-101 mod um, just to make it a little bit more flush, give me a little bit more space and while I'm in there cleaning that up I'll get these lines here, hopefully they'll be a little bit less obvious from the front because you can see those, those scars from when I was just ripping that stuff off but anyway, I will be back in a moment, I'm not going to film myself on the Dremel um, mostly because I don't have a good way to do so. Back in a GIF. Okay, so I just got done cleaning this up. I ended up 
you saw me, I took the material off with the flush cutters and the box cutter, then I ended up cleaning it up with the Dremel. I have a Dremel stand, and then I'm using milling bits in my Dremel, so it's basically a, a, a mini mill. And I just took a, a, a pass on the whole surface here, and you can see, if you look at it from an angle, it's, it's not perfect. But you know, it's smooth enough, and I cleaned up this area, and you know, from the front, it looks pretty decent. You can see the area where I cleaned it up if you look for it, but it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, didn't stick out nearly as much as it did anyway. And so I was looking at this screen, and if you're as dumb as me, you're probably thinking, gee, why is there this extra PCB on here at the end? If they had cut that off, it would just, it would fit fine. It would fit flush. But the problem is because of the screen looks like a portrait screen, there's all this extra on this side here uh, that isn't display. Uh, so this board here is so that you center your screen. Um, th there's as much extra display as there is board here. But anyway, if you didn't follow that, it's not too important. Just basically cut it like an AGS-101 mod and then completely annihilate this left wall here and anything else that might get in the way all the way up to the B button. But once you get that, you notice this thing drops right in. It's perfectly flat. It's not seesawing around on anything. Looks pretty good in there. It's hard to tell because it's not on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this now and probably regret it. Nope, there's already a piece of dust. Yep, definitely regretting it. There we go. Drop that in. And if all goes according to plan, this will not have to come out again. So, oof, wait. That is really bad. Hang on. I did accidentally scratch this lens. I shouldn't focus too much on it because I think I said it already, but I'm probably going to end up replacing this with a glass lens here. But in the meantime, oof, that is not getting better. It's like stained or something. Um, oh well. Drop that in there. Last time I remove it, I promise looks pretty good in there all right so now I need to solder on these three wires I'm gonna flip my soldering iron on and for the uh, control wires uh, I'm gonna use this 30 gauge Kynar wire this is solid core uh, copper conductor silver plated I like using this stuff mostly because I can get it locally, uh, but it's a lot easier to use, in my opinion, that, uh, than that like copper enamel wire. Um, I think it works pretty well. It's a, it's a little bit pricey because it is silver plated, or I, I think it is, I don't know. It looks silver to me, and that would explain why it's so pricey. Anyway, I'm just going to cut off three strips approximately equal length. I'll trim them to fit once I know how long they need to be. And I'm cutting them way longer than I need because I'd rather have wires that are too long than wires that are too short. Man, it's amazing. I'm still gonna keep bitching about my phone because, well, I'm like four and a half minutes into this section, but I've already filmed multiple other sections without it crashing. Knock on wood. I'm just stripping both ends of these wires. I probably don't need to strip these because I'm gonna be trimming them. But, oh, put the uh, wire strippers away. The soldering iron. So there are three 
solder leads on here. And quite frankly, it looks like the seller just sanded that spot away. Like they put a big solder blob on it and then they sand it away before shipping so you can find it. And you know what? That's actually not that bad of an idea. Come on. These don't have to be too thick. Like I said, I'm using the 30 gauge Kynar solid core. Uh, these are only carrying a data signal, not 250 milliamps of power, so they'll be fine nice and thin. I don't like that these solder blobs are not shiny, but I think I'll get over it. The hard part here is going to be remembering which wire is which. Probably going to have to flip back and forth. Come on. Okay, those are soldered down. Nice and flush. soldering iron okay so that one's pretty obvious because that one's all by its lonesome on the left and then the upper one you can get these this one's shorter so the upper one is shorter because these are about the same length okay good enough remind me when I forget okay so now I'm going to <gasps> I'm going to put in the LED light pipe before I forget. That goes right there. I didn't cut away anything that the LED light pipe needs. I'm going to put these buttons in. Probably going to swap out the buttons eventually. Um, but that's for another day. Boxy Pixel, if you guys aren't familiar, that's the guy who makes the al machined aluminum Game Boy shells. Uh, it looks like he just released some Game Boy Advance machined aluminum buttons. Might look into those for this. Might end up reshelling it. I don't know. So far so good. Don't forget your start select. In the meantime I'll just stick with the stock hardware. What I say? The top one is shorter? Yep. Now, all of the soldering, ugh, except for the start button. Ooh, and that. And maybe I'll just solder to the top. That might make it easier. Ah, oh, no, it won't. I'm going to solder these. I believe the white was the ground. I want to solder this so that it's flush installed. How am I going to do this? Flip it over that way. Okay. Cool. Was the white one the ground? I believe it was, but we will double check before I ruin this expensive screen. Okay. Indeed it was. Yeah, man. There it goes. Let's get a nice clean joint. And the other one. Positive. It's just so weird how it connects directly to the battery. I'm guessing it I'm guessing the CPLD is powered by the bus and then the screen and everything else is powered by this but is only switched on with like a, um, uh, whatchamacallit, one of those, ow, god those battery contacts are hot. Um, starts with an M, a MOSFET. Okay. 
So now we want to solder to this TP2 contact on the board here that I'm pointing to. It's labeled TP2, it's really small, I apologize. Uh, but what we're going to do is try and solder it so we can sandwich it closed this way in case I ever need to get in here so it's not a complete pain in the arse. And the start button, I'm guessing, is the lower of the two. Let me scroll up here on my tablet. Oh, too far. There we go. And... Come on. Okay. Oh, no, it's the upper one. The lower one is the left trigger. That seems counterintuitive. Okay, but the upper one, we're going to solder to TP2. So this one, I'm going to cut to... Uh, let's work it out here. Yeah, that'll be good. Cut it to that length. Uh, maybe a little bit longer. A little slack never hurt anybody. Get that out of the way. Strip that. Now I'm going to go ahead and tin this TP2 contact. I always hate soldering to test points because you can never untin them. But at the same time, I'm never going to use these test points as test points. Because when these things were made, these test points were there so that when the board was manufactured, they could plug it onto like a bed of nails, really, with a bunch of... Uh, um, contacts that would connect up to that test point, that test point, all these little test points here, and they can actually test the machine. And quite frankly, the machine that tested this probably doesn't even exist anymore, so it's a really stupid thing to get bothered about, but whatever. Uh, and then the other two wires are soldered to the triggers, and they can be soldered to test points up here. I'm pretty sure uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Maybe it's TP8. Whatever. It's a discussion for a different time. I'm going to lay those wires flat. Put them down there. Put that. Oh, wait. This is having trouble. Here's something tricky. The speaker needs to go in before or at least underneath the, the screen, which makes it difficult because the screen has to go in before the, oh wait, wait. That cuts into my space here. I don't think this is gonna work. Uh-oh, will that go sideways? No, it won't. I have an idea. Just a moment, I'll be right back. Sorry about that wait, I'm sure it felt like eons. Anyway, I'm back and with a speaker. From where you might ask? Well, I might have mentioned in another video that I buy tons of parts consoles and this DS Lite here is just the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, I've pulled so many parts from this thing, both the screens in it are bad, there's no buttons anymore, there's no membranes. Um, but. The funny thing is, you put a battery in this thing, it still boots up, it still tries to play games. So, uh, just popped the cover off, I took one of the speakers, I desoldered the other one while I was in there, just in case I need something down the line, but we'll, we only need one speaker for a GPA, I'll just go ahead and set that aside. And now, back to this. Alright, so, as far as removing the other speaker, let me say it sandwiches that way. Yeah. Okay. So, we want to get this speaker gone. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bend that up, 
I'm going to hold the board with my index finger and middle finger, and then I'm holding the speaker with my ring finger and my thumb, just kind of separating, and then I'm going to touch the iron to both these points. Same time, I probably can't do that because my iron's not big enough. Okay, so I'll just do one point at a time. Cool. That's gone. We can save this for another Game Boy Advance because that still works just fine. In fact, I'll probably end up putting it in this one because this console has a DS Lite speaker in it. Anyway, oh, one thing I forgot about. We're going to need to cut a hole for that thing. So before I even bother trying to solder that in, let's figure out how it fits. So this will probably end up going... Doesn't have to be perfect at all. I'll put that gasket in there just so it looks better. Um... I think that'll work. Or we can do it like this. Actually, let's do it like that. It's going to make it a lot easier, the mod here. I'm going to do it flush. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my flush cutters, just kind of mark the plastic it out okay and cut right there and then on the bottom right there that's probably gonna look awful but that's okay I'm going to score the inside of that with my flush cutters again. Now I'm using them as pliers and not cutters. I'm going to kind of twist that off. Perfect. Ooh, and that looks awful. Let's see if I can clean that up a little. Much you can see. I'll try and put that in the center there. I'm just shaving the plastic down on the sides here. Try and make it look a wee bit better. And then really what I need is like a chisel or something. A sharp chisel. But I'm just going to try and cut it with my knife. Flex the blade a little bit. Get out of there. There we go. Get all the shavings out. I'm going to use a wee bit of fire. To get the whiteness out. Drop that gasket back in. Where'd my speaker go? How did I lose it? Oh, it's underneath the board. There we go. Now, I'm still butthurt that it can't sit flush, but I think I'll get over it. Ooh, what I should do is I should tape this to the board where it needs to go. Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I am going to go get some nice, thick, double-sided tape, because this is significantly thinner than uh, this speaker here. This is the original. And you can see even this one has some like spac spacers on the back. Yes, but this is essentially going to sit up there. Okay. Let me go grab a little bit of tape. One moment. All right, I'm going to use this red tape I have. Uh, this isn't the 3M VHB or whatever the hell it is. This is some off-brand. I couldn't tell you what because there's no branding on it. It's just red with a white core 
stick it on there, just cut off a little square. And then you peel the red off and the tape itself is clear. So, now I'm not 100% sure why they did this with red and black wire, because the polarity does not matter. I'm going to drop that in there, stick my finger to it. Sit this flush as close to flush as I can. Ooh, see, now it goes all the way down. Yes. And then hopefully when I lift it back up, my speaker stuck down. Indeed it is. Cool. Okay. Let me lift that back up. And my speaker is stuck down. Now how am I going to solder this easily? Now I'm just going to solder it from the back. That makes so much more sense. It's going to be so much easier. Instead of soldering it from the front like it's originally soldered. Just through hole vias, so. Ooh! And instead of trying to grab that, I'm gonna use these new tweezers I bought. I bought these for a couple bucks on the AliExpress. Figure, hey, what's the worst that could happen? They're shit. I'll give them one star. Okay. And quite frankly, I'm digging them so far. They're a little stiff. And you can hardly see what I'm doing because that whole uh, framing thing. Oh well. We've all seen solder in before. All right. Tuck that in. That should be good enough. Scooch that off to the side. Try this one more time. Once more with uh, with feeling here. I wish that would twist. Oh, I wish that twisted the other way. No, it can. Okay, that's fine. Not sitting flush. Something happened. Oh, yeah, it is. I just didn't realize it was all the way down. <gasps> Ooh, we're so close. Okay, I didn't find the original screws. So I'll probably find them when I clean up. Uh, but I do have a little container full of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color and whatever the hell else I take apart. Screws for consoles. I was able to find two OEM screws that likely came out of a Game Boy Advance. Anyway, got all three of the motherboard screws in. I'm just tucking in the speaker wires because they sit out a little too much. Ooh, that might be an issue. Eh, it's fine. The uh, wires on the speaker are, uh, they're going to have to bend at a 90 degree angle. but I think it's going to be all right. It fits. Barely, but it fits. Okay. I'm going to rearrange these wires to be flat. don't know how much it matters. And I'm going to bring this wire up. And with approximately the same amount of slack, Eh, we'll leave all the slack on there, just as long as it is. Uh, this goes to that shoulder button there. I think we solder it to the left point. Uh, one of the two, there are four points on each shoulder button here. The two outside are anchors just to hold it in place when you're physically pressing the shoulder button. You know, it's, it's stressful on the hardware, uh, like physically stressful. And then there are two buttons for that two solder points for the actual button 
it looks like the left button is the actuation signal and the right contact is the common ground. So I'm going to solder. Annoyingly enough, I think this is going to have to come apart to or be desoldered to take apart because this wire, you know, the slack on that's not fantastic. All right, is it the same for the other side? Indeed, it is. We've got a tin mat. And brilliant. And turn off the iron. Hopefully, I don't need it anymore this evening. Tuck that in. Battery compartment. Tuck that into the battery compartment. I don't really like that it's running under the uh, battery contact. But what you gonna do? Okay. That shoulder. Oh, forgetting something important, huh? Slide that in there. You know, before I get any further, I'm going to test this out. Let's double check, see that it's working. That way, I don't put all the screws in. Just have to take all the screws out. So, same thing with the meter, leaving it on 10 amp mode. Connect that up, flip it around, and this is my first time seeing this installed with brightness control. That is super bright, according to the camera at least. Oh yes, and it's uh, select. TP2 is select. Left gets dimmer, right gets brighter. So at full brightness, pulls probably 300 milliamps. At lowest brightness, it goes all the way down to 1.8 or 180. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna switch that off. Does it remember? It does. Okay. Switch that off. Switch that to that, that to that. Switch it on. Turn it back on. And it's still topping out the meter. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you can see. As I raise the brightness, the power LED fades to nothing. Both the green and the red light are on. Yeah, that is, that is not fantastic. Okay. So here is what they look like side by side. And on low brightness, you can see it gets much dimmer. This is probably on high. Let me switch it. This uses a switched battery or ribbon cable. You know, it's in the battery compartment. It's kind of a pain in the arse to get to. Okay, so yeah, now it's on low. Hold that at the same angle there. To me, mm, this one still looks a little bit brighter. But they're both pretty, pretty dim. I'll turn that all the way up. Yeah, that is significantly brighter. Let's see if I can switch this without taking... No, that's not happening. Switch that back up high brightness back on and yeah this is noticeably brighter to me okay turn that off turn this off we're going to try a noticeably power hungry cart here so 
switch that back over to 10 amps. Sorry for bumping the camera. Plug this in. See if it boots. I'll leave it on high brightness. Yeah. So, it boots. Did you see that? We're pulling almost 400 milliamps. Let's see if we can boot a game here. Uh, do a blazing emerald. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, that is gnarly. This screen looks fantastic, but this thing is going to chew through batteries. Okay. Done with this, let's put it back together. Whew. One second. All right, so I need to put this back in. I'm just gonna move this off my desk because I won't be needing it anymore. You didn't just hear that. I didn't just throw it. Both shoulder buttons and the power switch. And hopefully, everything still fits. All right, so it's pressing those wires. Oh, no, it's not. There's some room. Yeah, OK. No, it's, it's all good. I was worried about nothing. I'll put the Phillips in first, because that's the bit I already have in my screwdriver. Or JIS. I'm not. I'm actually not sure. Pretty sure these are JIS screws, not Phillips. But I'm gonna keep calling them Phillips. It's Phillips. My driver is Phillips. And these screws are not. Now it's my understanding that Phillips and JIS screws are largely the same thing. Uh, you know, you look at one, you look at the other, you can see they share a, a common design. Uh, but the thing with Phillips screws is that they are designed to cam out uh, when you apply too much torque. And too much is pretty arbitrary there. Uh, sometimes too much is actually not enough and it leads to stripped out screws and lots of frustration and stripped out drivers and a bad time. JIS on the other hand is designed, my understanding at least, to be largely the same thing except that the driver, you know, torques down properly. It doesn't cam out when you apply too much pressure. And what I mean by cam out is like you're, you're twisting, you know, you're trying to turn the screw, but the screwdriver like backs out of the screw and starts spinning in the head. That's what I mean by cam out. Okay. Got all the screws in, put the batteries in. I think I'm using rechargeables. I don't even have the right color color battery cover for this thing. I just have transparent, whereas this is arctic. But the buttons feel right, the shoulder buttons. I'm going to pop in a regular game here. Fire it up. That looks pretty good. It is insane how the screen looks. It's like, um, 
if you have a Game Boy emulator and you uh, enable linear scaling like I was trying to talk about earlier let me turn the brightness down so you can see a little bit better um, and you know you're playing on your 4k screen or whatever and you see everything's so crisp but you know it's still so pixelated that's exactly what I'm seeing here it's just absolutely bizarre seeing it on a Game Boy Advance okay we don't need to watch me play Advance Wars but before I go I'm gonna try out my flash cart here so we can see how Game Boy Color games look and this should be this is actually going to be largely representative of how Ben Venn's new Freckle Shack is going to look because this uses the same four times linear scaling. And I've never played this game before. At least I've never played the ROM hack. One thing uh, one of my colleagues was worried about uh, was since the screen looks like it's a sideways portrait LCD, you know, if there might be some noticeable input lag because the refresh rate on the screen itself, you know, it's going top to bottom, whereas the Game Boy Advance is going to be going top to bottom. You see what I'm saying? So the screen will have to wait one full refresh cycle before it starts updating top to bottom. It'll have to wait one full refresh Game Boy Advance cycle top to bottom here and then start refreshing that way but it doesn't seem to be the case I'm not noticing any lag oh that was some interesting artifacting at the top I wonder if that was the ROM or the screen uh, anyway so here is the completed mod I think it looks absolutely lovely I'm very happy with it so far I'll be playing with it, trying it out, seeing what's going on. I'll probably post some updates on the Game Boy subreddit. I don't know if I'll make another video. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, this is fantastic. I highly recommend this. And, God, even the... It still works in Game Boy, Advan or Game Boy Color mode. That That's obvious. But, yeah, it's just so cool. I love it. Thanks for watching. I want to add one more thing before I call it an evening here. Uh, well, I guess two things. So I was cleaning up. I found the screws. My uh, tablet here has a magnetic cover, and they were stuck to that. Mystery solved. Anyway, let's compare some viewing angles. So this is a, an AGS-101 reproduction screen, and then that's my uh, new Taobao screen here. Um, it's probably easier if... Uh, I had a better background, but I don't have two carts that are the same. One interesting thing I'm noticing in the screen, and I hope it comes out on video too, is the rolling shutter effect, or whatever that is. Anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and tilt these up to the same angle. You can see the uh, Taobao screen is still easily visible, while the AGS-101, it's not so much. Uh, you can keep going on that almost vertical. I mean, at that point, why bother? But whatever. All right. Here's the bottom. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure they're both framed and at the same angle, so it's a fair test. Now, it's kind of hard to see them both at this point. Let me drop that angle a little bit. Okay, that's a good angle. You can see, you can still see pretty both pretty well. I don't think you'd go any more extreme an angle than that. And do left. Let me excuse my fumbling. I'll lift this up a little. Hope these both the same angle simultaneously. Interestingly, they're not flat to the camera. Let's try that. You know, they're both pretty good. 
Okay. And left. So you see at some angles. You know, this isn't exactly a scientific test. But at all angles you would use it at, I think it looks pretty darn good. And this one, I mean, I guess the same thing, really. If you're doing this mod for the IPS screen, it's not exactly worth it. But if you're doing the mod for the four times linear scaling, I mean, it's not going to make your games look any better. Let me get that clear. I think it's worth it. Thanks, guys.